Hello WordPress enthusiasts and welcome to Elementor News. This page builder plugin is getting better and better every day. So in this video, I will preview all of the options available starting with version 2.9. You can test these features as well as other new features before being launched as a beta tester. To do that, go to the tools of Elementor and enable the beta tester option in this drop-down. Click Save Changes, then go ahead and update the plugin. I am working on a local host, which is a local server on my computer, so I am 100% safe doing it. As you can see here, they don't recommend updating a production site to a beta version, so I will comply with these requirements. Once the process is complete, I can go ahead and add a new page, which I'll edit with Elementor. As you can see, the background of my page is blue, which now I can set as a global option in the new theme style settings. This is the most significant change happening for Elementor lately and it will be available for every user as soon as the 2.9 version goes live. When accessing the theme style settings, the update button becomes blue, and this means that when you click update, you update everything made with Elementor on your site. I don't know if it will affect your theme settings in the customizer as well, but I will check that out in a minute, so keep watching. Let's add some content to this page to see what is happening when we change the theme style settings. So, I'll drag over the heading widget and change its HTML tag to H1. Duplicate it. But wait, there is another useful feature I want to show you. If you don't like to right-click over and over when duplicating elements, Go to Preferences and enable the editing handles. Now the Duplicate and Delete options are displayed when hovering over. And for Columns, you also see the Add Column option. Cool. Let me duplicate the Heading widget six times and set separate HTML tags for each one. Also, let me drag over a button widget and change the color of the text as well as the background color. I think another good piece of content for this demo is the paragraph block. So, I'll drag it over and put in some lorem ipsum dummy text. If you don't use Elementor Pro, but want to have widgets to create forms, install and activate the Orbit Fox plugin and make sure the Page Builder widgets module is active in general settings. Now I can drag over the contact form widget and then I can go ahead to the theme style settings to show you how it works. As you can see, when accessing the theme style, all other settings are turned off. For the background you have three possibilities, color, gradient or image. When you choose an image, there are four more settings you can adjust below. Position, attachment, repeat and size. Moving down to the typography settings and changing the H1 color, you can see that the text line that stands for that HTML tag becomes white. If you update the settings, this will be the global color of the H1 tag. So every time you drag over a new heading element and change its tag to H1, the color becomes the one set in its global settings white in this case. 
if I go to the style settings of this particular widget and pick red for the text color, that setting will override the global settings and nothing happens when changing the HTML tags. I hope I was clear enough and now you understand how to use the new theme style options for your text widgets and how they affect your content made with Elementor. The button widget works the same. If you already set the text color, border and other things in the style tab of the element, nothing is happening when you go to buttons in the theme style settings and make changes. But if you pick black as the text color and white for the background and update those settings, the next button you drag over and other buttons that have global settings on your site will display the new settings. Cool. Now I can go to the form field settings and see what's happening with the contact form I already have on this page. Everything you change here will affect your form style. The only missing thing probably is the placeholder text options, but it's nice that I can change the normal and focus settings separately. As you can see, the message field doesn't get the background color changes, but that could be a widget coding problem. The last options are for images. And you can set some border type, width, color, radius, opacity, as well as box shadow and CSS filters globally for the normal view as well as the hover effect. There is one more thing I want to show you about the image widget. Starting with 2.9, Elementor introduces some new capabilities to the lightbox feature, which is used for displaying media files like images, videos and galleries. If I set the link to media file in this dropdown and enable the lightbox, When I go to the preview of this page and click on the image, you can see three more options in the top right corner of the light box. Full screen, zoom in and out, share or download. And all the functionalities mentioned works perfectly on mobile too. Visitors can zoom, open images and videos in full screen and share from their phones. All of the controls in the user interface are improved now and have consistent colors, dimensions and positioning controls. Now let's check out the theme settings in the customizer to see if the element or theme style is affecting those settings too. That shouldn't happen, but let's check it out. As you can see, in the colors and background menu of Nevi, the color is white, so if I go back to my dashboard and try adding a new page, the background of that page is white. If I edit the same page with Elementor, the background becomes blue. So once I click update, the background of that page in the preview becomes blue. So you still need to take care of these settings separately in the customizer, which will affect your blog posts, the header, and the footer of your website. 
However, you can pick a different background color for each page made with Elementor in the Style tab when you access the page settings over here. I hope it was helpful for you guys, so leave a comment below and tell me if the new features of Elementor will help you build a better website. Do you prefer Elementor Pro or the free version is enough? I am curious about what you think. See you in the next video. Cheers.